Hello, it's Duncan. Today we're going to use Kotlin value classes to create another tiny type. That will allow us to remove all the ways that our item constructor can fail, leaving us with the clean code that we deserve for all this refactoring. OK, now returning to item, we had the same problem with quality as we had with name. That is to say that there are values that an int can have that are not acceptable to item. In this case, any negative values. We call a function that can only give a result for some of the range of its input values a partial function. So it's only defined over some of the possible inputs we can give it. So what we're doing here is we're trying to make in particular, the constructor of item, a total function. We want it to be applicable to all of its inputs, because if it is, then we don't have to worry about errors, at least not errors that are caused by us passing in a value that the function can't deal with. OK, so you may see the pattern here. We had non-blank string. What if we were to have a non-negative int? If the only qualities that could be passed into our item's constructor were non-negative, then it wouldn't have to deal with negative qualities. So let us go and create ourselves a non-negative int, and we'll do it by copying the class we have at the moment. So we have non-blank string. We'll just copy that, and we'll call it non-negative int. Add that. And actually, IntelliJ has been really helpful here because it has renamed our class when we copied it, not just the file. Because we don't want a string in here, we want an int. And we can't be a char sequence not reasonably, our value is going to be an int. And we want to check here, not if the value is not blank, but if the value is greater than or equal to zero. And here we're going to require value is greater than or equal to zero. Again, the init method shouldn't be required. And to string again, I think probably we just want to use whatever an int would look like. So we're going to use value dot to string. Okay. Armed with that, let's go back to item and we'll do the same as we did before, which is to change the type of quality to our non negative int, but give ourselves a computed property with the name quality so that existing code will continue to work. So we want val quality and we'll call this thing quality object again for want of a better. So that's going to be a non-negative int. This is going to be our quality object value. And here we are taking an int, but we need to create a non-negative int around it. Now we know that we've got tests that make that fail. So this time we'll go straight to creating ourselves a quality object of the int that we've been passed. And if that was to fail, then we want to return failure with our error inside it, and that's a negative quality. That's this thing. We can use the quality object in here. And if we run that, we expect to have the same behavior. One little problem here, and that's that this is our quality object now. And that this, we need to create a non-negative int. Now, this can obviously fail at runtime. It could return a null. But you see, in practice, it can't because we are coercing in zero. So zero is the floor of this. What I think we'll do is we will say that if we were wrong, that would be an error in our thinking. And we can use the Elvis operator to say that. So let's try that. We have a failure. And these are the failures where we actually look into an item. And that's because we've now changed the name of the property in here. So now we've got it running. We can go back into our item and rename these. So this we can call quality int now. And this is our quality. Okay, now as before, 
we can now not actually create an item where this can fail. Quality int is now derived from the quality, and we know that the quality's value is negative negative. So we can remove this init block altogether, which was the point. Having removed that init block, then we are not going to throw, so we don't need to do this trial failure either. So we can just replace this, that, and that means that this item creation exception is not possible either. So we can delete that. Run the test to check that we are right about that. And we are. Okay, let's go back up again. Now we don't actually want our constructor function here to be taking an int. And we'll migrate our way into that as we did last time by duplicating this and having a version that takes a non-negative int. Now, in this case, we know that we can't fail. So we don't need to return a result anymore. We can return just an item. We shouldn't need to do that. And in fact, we're just calling the constructor here now. We should, for completeness, implement our old version in terms of our new one so that we're testing everything through the old one before we go on. So this can now call return success of item dot invoke passing just those parameters. Check that works. And now that invoke just returns an item, it can be a constructor rather than this odd constructor function in our companion object. So we'll take this and move it to be a constructor. Constructor syntax is a bit different. So in here, we need to say this given all the parameters. And this is now not item invoked, but it is just calling that constructor. Let's run that. And now we can go through the callers of this version that takes an int and replace them with calls to the constructor. So let's go and find them. In the tests, first of all, we have cannot create an item with negative quality. Well, this is the case that we're trying to get rid of. As with the non-blank string, we can't create an item with negative quality because we have to pass in a negative negative quality. So this test can just go away. And part of the point of these tiny types is that they allow us to do things in our type system rather than having to write tests to show that they're true. Test item. Test item is taking an int. In our tests, it would be a bit of a pain to have to create a non-negative int rather than just passing an int literal. So we can do the same thing as we had done here, which is to say we're going to take our quality and we'll wrap it in a non-negative int. Now the constructor can't fail, so we can get rid of this on failure code. But that call could, and once again, in the case of test code, I think it's okay to say, bang, bang, if this non-negative int return null, then we'd fail at runtime. Some people might put more diagnostic code in there. Um, I think in a small team, this should be fine. So let's check those two changes are okay. Now, for some reason, IntelliJ hasn't shown us the invocation of our constructor function in our construction code, but we know that it's here. So it's this item here. This isn't the constructor. This is our invoke. And we're going to do the same job as we did with the name. And in this case, we're taking the second part. We're saying to int or null, and we want to pipe that into a let. And in here, we want to have a non-negative int. If this returns null, then the result of all this will be null, and we'll be returning this failure with couldn't pass quality. Now, that's a change in behavior, which we'll see when we run the tests. But now we're calling the actual constructor. There is no failure again, so we can remove this. But we have to wrap this in success. Note that we do have to account for errors 
in our string to item. This is returning a result with a stock list loading error because all of these parsings can fail and we need to say how and why they failed. What we don't need to do now is account for a failure of creating an item because creating items can't fail. Let's go and check that our tests do fail when we run them. And here, as we expected, a test that shows what happens when we try to load with a negative quality has failed. And it's because it used to fail with this couldn't create item wrapping our negative quality from our item type. But now it's just this couldn't pass quality that we returned in here. That's not a bad change. So let's go back to our test and say, this is going to be couldn't pass quality. And the thing inside that is going to be the string that we failed to pass. Check that. And that does pass. Now we can return to persisting and this doc list loading error. Now this could not create item is unused because item creation errors don't happen. In fact, item creation errors don't happen. So this should be unused as well. So let's delete that if we can. So we've got two uses that aren't safe. Let's go and look at them. One is in itself, which you might think was safe. And another is that our now unused invoke method uses this item creation error. So I think we can get rid of all of this. First of all, check that compiles. That's good. Now we can get rid of this. Now we should be able to get rid of this. And that means that up in here, we can get rid of this unused one as well. And now hopefully item doesn't have to refer to any result type at all, which is far nicer. We will get there. Good. Let's go back to item and just check it over. We still got this quality in here. I think we should better get rid of that. There are 12 uses of this. Let's have a look. Okay. So first of those is here, this quality int. Well, we know we can just use the two string on quality itself. So we can get rid of that one. Okay. Here we're talking to quality int. I think we should inline that one for now. Let's go looking for some more. And in all these cases, we could just inline quality int. So I'm going to do that for now. I've done that by hand because I don't want to do it everywhere in the code base just yet. Go back to item and ask for who references quality int. I've missed a few simple update items that was badly laid out. Let's fix that one. Conjured. Oh, we missed a few. Again, I'm doing these by hand just because I want to know the effect of this change. We'll go back and have a look at these in a minute. And two line here is using quality int. And again, that's in a two string scenario. So we can just get rid of that. One last one. Surely. So now quality int is dead. IntelliJ knows it and allows us to get rid of it. We could probably safely inline that, but we would have had to look everywhere in order to know. So it was maybe better to do by hand like we did. So let's just see what we've changed. We've introduced this non-negative int type. That's forced us to look inside it whenever we want to do sums. But when we pass it around, we know that item can always be created. 
So in the case of persisting, we do know about non-negative ints, but it's the code that reads that has to deal with the error, not the code that actually creates an item. Looking at our item type now, then we can get rid of this suppress data class private constructor because we're happy for items to be copied any which way. So we can get rid of that. And also I think we're happy to remove this private or the privateness of this constructor and allow people to create items with any of these combinations of properties. So finally, item feels like it can be a proper data class. And that's because we've made it so that all of the values of its properties are acceptable. So I think we're going to commit this as introduce non-negative int. Fix what are no doubt to imports. And commit that. Replacing string and int parameters with a non-blank string and non-negative int has converted the construction of item from a partial function, which can only return a result for some of the possible input values, to a total function, which can always give a result. So we now have less of our code which can fail, which is totally worth it. Unfortunately, Kotlin value classes tend to push the complication elsewhere, as we can't use them as, as if they were the type they refine. We can add specific operations to them, though, as we'll see in the next episode. If you'd like to see that happen, then please subscribe to the channel using one of the buttons that should pop up soon. And if you like this content, I think you'll enjoy the book I wrote with Nat Price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thank you for watching.